Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node-RED project, here with the release notes for the 0.20 release. This release brings a major restructuring of the internals of Node-RED. It's now structured into multiple individual NPM modules. Now this change won't mean much for most end users, as you'll still just install Node-RED and use it as you always have. But it opens up new options for how you can embed Node-RED into existing applications, reuse individual components of it, and in fact do far more. And it's a major step in our roadmap towards 1.0. As announced in the last release, you now need at least Node version 8 to run Node-RED. And we also support Node 10, and we will follow along with the Node LTS releases as they happen. The editor has had a number of UI changes. A node's edit dialog now uses a tabbed interface to get to different sections of properties of the node. There's a new description tab that allows you to add documentation to every single node in a markdown format, along with a new markdown toolbar to help you format it, and a preview pane to see the rendered text. On the node appearance tab, we've added to the selection of icons you can customise to include the complete set of Font Awesome version 4 icons. The main tab bar has had some new features added. There's a new button which, when you click it, brings up the search dialog pre-filtered to all of your tabs to make it much easier to switch between your tabs. You can add a new tab by simply double-clicking on white space between existing tabs. You can select whole tabs at a time, allowing you to export multiple tabs in one go very easily. The palette can now be collapsed just like the sidebar could be, to give you maximum screen space for editing your flows. Subflows have had a number of important enhancements. You can now add a special status node within the subflow to control what status messages the subflow instance node will emit. Nodes within the subflow can now access their parent flows context by prepending the key with $parent. A subflow can also define a set of properties, like environment variables, scoped to just that subflow. And those values can then be customised on a per-instance basis of that subflow. This makes subflows a much easier to reuse component within your flows now. The link nodes have had a major change into how you can work with them. Whereas before you would have to edit each link node and select which other link node it is connected to, now when you select a link node it shows a new virtual port where you can then drag and drop wires between the link nodes just like you can normal nodes and wires. The import and export dialogs now allow you to upload or download files with the flows in, rather than having to copy and paste the text to and from your clipboard. The deploy menu has a new option to reload your flows. That allows you to restart everything without having to make some artificial change in your flow configuration to get the deploy button to become enabled. The HTTP request node has had a number of updates. In addition to basic authentication, it now also supports digest and bearer authentication schemes. It's now also much easier to do file uploads by providing a message.payload in the appropriate format. The File Output node has a new option to allow you to choose the encoding it should use when writing the file, rather than relying on the node trying to guess what the right answer is. The Runtime offers a new command line parameter to enter into what we call Safe Mode. That will cause the runtime to load your flows, but not actually start them running. You can then open up the editor, make any changes you want, and when you hit Deploy, the runtime will save those changes and exit Safe Mode and start your flows. That's useful if you accidentally create something in your flows that causes Node-RED to crash, or some behaviour you just need to get rid of without it starting. And there are a bunch of other smaller changes and enhancements right across the editor and runtime. Have a look at the release notes for more details. This release is the next major step to our version 1.0. What we're looking at now is how can we accelerate our path to get to 1.0 sooner than we currently have planned. So keep a lookout for 0.21 in the near future, there will be some more subflow enhancements, some more interesting work around pluggable message routing, and the usual mix of fixes and small enhancements right across the board.